Anyway, we'll slowly start. There is a lot to talk in mining. And I'm so, so happy because the morning sessions are always the most difficult. And seeing a lot of the faces, some familiar, some new, so I'm super happy. In the morning is super great. Like I'm super pumped that there are a lot of people interested in mining. And I'll try to share as many uh, personal tips uh, from my mining experience to, um, to some funny tips or the trends in the future. And we'll see. I'm sorry, but the... The initial workshop was supposed to be done by Bitcoin Gandalf. His real name is Daniel Semperepico. Uh, he doxed a few weeks ago and you can follow him on YouTube where he's actually starting his vlog. So please um, give him a subscribe on YouTube. He's very, very sorry he cannot be here. Um, he's my right hand man at Brains and he's so very sad that he cannot be here. But I'll do my best to cover for him and to show you some of the best stuff from mining. So just to start, uh, I would like to walk, but I, they, they chained me to this place, so it's kind of unnatural to be standing here like a president, but anyway. Uh, I'll start with, with Brain's context, um, so just so you understand why the hell I'm talking about uh, mining, right? Who the hell is that guy? So I'm Christian, uh, I lead marketing at Brain's. Brain's is one of the oldest um, companies in mining, so we are, we are in the mining space since 2010. We're running the oldest Bitcoin mining pool, which mined over 1.3 million Bitcoin. So it's not us, it's our clients that mine it. So it's like a, you have to have a physical machines and then you use our software. Um, other than that, we, we started doing other fun projects because all that we can think about is mining every single day. So we started doing a firmware, which is basically, think about an operating system for your machine. So think about you buy a laptop and you want the Windows or you want Linux. So we do the same for the mining machines and we get a very good upside. I'll get to that later. Uh, there's a good reason to use our firmware because I see uh, some of the big, big miners in the audience and they are not still using our firmware. So I'm, I'm going to be talking to them also. Oh, sorry. Okay. So it's good to see that in the audience there are ranging from the biggest fish in the industry to pleb miners like myself, who has like five S19s uh, and a few watts miners. So, and we do other stuff because um, the, the mining, as I'll, I'll show you later, it's a huge industry right now. It's really millions of miners, uh, like the physical machines, very professionalizing industry. So we started doing other tools such as like um, to help you manage the farm or he help you manage the bandwidth of the farm. So there are a lot of new starting software, very, uh, I'll get to it later. Like there are a lot of new markets um, being created in the mining space. For example, the farm proxy See, it's just a app, uh, like software tool that helps you reduce the bandwidth of your farm. This market didn't exist two years ago yet, or like a year and a half ago. So it just shows you, uh, people always think, they, mining is so slow, we're not innovating, it's the same machines running all the time. It's not true. There's a lot of innovation, and I'll, I'll show you more and more uh, coming into the industry. Also, we started doing hardware. Uh, so this is the first ever Brains uh, hardware. Uh, this is a control board, so this is a the the brain of the miner. So it's like the, think about it as a small computer that sits on top of the mining machine and like manages all the work. It says to the chips, hey, uh, hash, uh, hash here. Then takes the work and sends it to the pool. So it's just a brain of the mining, uh, mining, um, mining machine. And of course, like why we're doing it, they, um, why else? We want to do the shovels in the future, right? So, so we're starting to do the hardware, and this is our first project that is in the market right now, and we're already selling and shipping worldwide. Uh, of course, we play, we're Bitcoin maxis as it gets, so we, we also do some open source work. Uh, most notably, we're the co-authors of Stratum V2, which is a mining protocol, very fancy name for just a, it's just a set of rules how the mining machine communicates with the pool. And, uh, as you'll see, we need new standards because the industry is very, very different from what it was 10 years ago when the first um, protocol was introduced. So we do that and also we focus heavily on education. I'll get to that later. And uh, we're publishing some books, educational material, and I'll get to why it's very important in a bit. Uh, la, 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 la. So I'll go switch to the... By the way, the name of the presentation was supposed to be how to run a Bitcoin miner. And then they had in parentheses uh, with a live S9 demo. They, Gandalf, who was supposed to have this workshop, told me yesterday he's not coming. So uh, I don't have S9 because he has it at home. But uh, I, I, 
like we have to have some hands-on experience today. So we'll be connecting remotely to one of the mining machines that we have in our farm, the S19, so it's the new generation. And if you want to have a hands-on experience, you'll be following my steps. So whoever follows my steps, what I will be doing, you'll be mining at the end of the workshop. Of course, with like like 10 tera hash, it's like not, not much, I'll not make you rich, but you'll have the hands-on experience. And in the end of the this workshop, you can, with a clear consciousness, say to your, to your parents, I'm a Bitcoin miner. So I'll, I'll do that. Just quick introduction. If you have no idea about mining, I highly recommend this article, which is on our blog post. I just want to have one takeaway from this. Mining is not solving complex math problems. That's the only thing that you have to remember. And whenever you see it in the media, you have to call the bullshit because you see it every single week. And this is not true. So this is the most important takeaway that I want you to take today, right? It's, it's think about the dice, dice analogy. One miner is one dice, one, one roll of the dice is one hash, etc., etc. So it's not solving any ma complex math problems. I have to start always here because it's not even possible how... Uh, how the media t always um, take, take it the wrong way. Anyway, I want to start with the, so you understand the scale and um, the, big, the big picture of the mining industry. So we started naturally in the past mining on CPUs. So you could, uh, the difficulty of mining was so low or so easy that everybody could mine on anything. So of course we were mining on CPUs, like your traditional laptop. Then we moved to GPUs because everybody figured out, uh, hey, here's a more powerful thing. GPUs are quite powerful. If we go from CPUs to GPUs, hey, we'll mine more corn. Um, so naturally, they moved to GPUs. Then I have one interesting fact. Then everybody says we had an FPGA era, right? FPGA is just a fancy word. I don't, don't quote me on the acronym. But it's a, it's a fancy hardware where you like uh, virtualize or you like... Uh, um, you architect how the ASIC chip would look like, and it runs like the ASIC would run. But it's like you do it on the software level, so you like code the ASIC. But everybody says there was an era of FPGA mining. So we were on a very, very OG Bitcoin mining um, conference in January in Nashville, and uh, there are like really like miners there are mining since the very beginning. And somebody asked like, so who ran the FPGAs back in the days? None of the hands rose. So nobody voted they mind on FPGA. So the takeaway from me is, yes, there were some um, experiments with it because everybody wanted to test uh, if we can run the ASICs in the future, but there was never an era of FPGA mining. So there were not like a home miners with a lot of FPGAs plugged in and mining. It was just a just like, like a middle step from the GPUs to the ASICs. So it's just an interesting fact. Um, I don't have a... Uh, miner here today, but uh, but I hope you all know how it looks like. So this is a new generation from Bitmain. Uh, very very simple. I have to stay here the, the camera. Uh, so on top when you see the like little hat on the on the ma machine, that's where the control board is hidden. So on the top when where you see the like metal hat underneath that, there's the computer and it basically runs the machine. It's very simple. It's like a Wi-Fi router, let's say. It's one one board computer that tells the machine, hey, run the fans, hey, run the chips, and then takes the work and sends it to the pool. On the bottom part, you have hash boards. Which is, think about like your normal computer, like a motherboard, but instead of like having random, uh, like a, a lot of different components, it has the this these small chips and only that. So one hash board would have, four, so in the normal ASIC machine, you have like three hash boards, and on each hash board you have, for example, like 50 of those small tiny chips. And each of those chips is doing the not complex mathematical problems, it's rolling the dice. And it's doing one thing, just rolling the dice, and very efficiently, that's the point of mining. It cannot do anything, anything else. It cannot calculate two plus two, it's super dumb. But for Bitcoin mining, for the roll of the dice, it's the beast. It's the, it's the best machine that there can be. It's specialized to do only one thing. So in normal, and just to give you a scale, when we went from GPU era to the ASIC era, so this is a chip from S17s, which is a Bitmain Antminer from, 
uh, four years ago, three years ago, doesn't three years ago, doesn't matter. And just this one chip, we calculated how powerful it is to mine Bitcoin compared to, and we compared to GPU, NVIDIA RTX 3090, right? And it was like a, j just this one chip was like a 20 or 30 those GPUs on like top end NVIDIA GPUs. And in one machine, you have 150 of those. So just to give you a idea how the jump from, from security standpoint of Bitcoin and from the professionalization when, when we went from GPUs at home to uh, having a lot of a lot of these around the world. And now just so you understand the scale, in 2012, um, in 2012, the whole mining network was like two S9s. Like that's the that's the Bitmain uh, Bitmain miner from from six years ago. Today it would be calculated to 32 million S9s. So that's that's how that's how big the mining really got. Uh, so we are talking about large farms, a lot of miners, uh, big professional data centers. It's not like. It's very opaque sometimes, the mining industry, but I want to emphasize it's a huge industry with a lot of players and a lot of smart players. And that's good, and that's good for Bitcoin, but just to give you an idea, it's really, really insanely big industry already, and it's growing like... <laughs> I'm a miner myself, so I was like, yeah, here is a bear market, I'm mining, I'm gonna be fine. But the hash rate is still growing. I have no idea what's happening, don't ask me that question. Everybody still asks me, hey, nobody knows. <laughs> nobody has the, the, the crystal ball, really, in the end of the day, nobody knows. Um, but it's getting crazy, so uh, it's getting bigger every day, the, the whole industry. So, I'm gonna make you, a, I'm gonna make you mine today. Uh, so I summarize, so if you want to get into mining, like, right, at the end of this workshop, we want to be a Bitcoin miner. So what do we do? You have to start with education. You have to first learn why the hell Bitcoin. And that's true across the industry. There is no player in the game and that, that's really good for Bitcoin. There are really no, and we know all the like top, like top uh, um, publicly traded miners it, down to the pleb miners all around the world. Everybody understands Bitcoin. It's like you have to understand it to want to go into the game because otherwise like why the hell would you go into Bitcoin mining? Like it's, it's brutal. Bitcoin mining is truly the most brutal, vicious and dangerous industry in the world. So so only psychopaths that really believe Bitcoin is the future go in. Like that, that, that's uh, hands down the truth. So you have to start with why the hell Bitcoin and then go into a little bit more about mining itself. So here I would recommend our, our blog. So brains.com slash blog, take a picture of it. Um, we have everything from from um, explaining the DICE analogy of mining to, to giving you hands-on guide how to build like a mm, greenhouse reusing acid heat, right? So e even up to the uh, to more industrial topics like uh, what's the difference with, between like a or how, how dynamic power scaling, like uh, specific features in the firmware can help you in the large operations. So really from pleb content to industrial content and everything for free, just, so, just go and learn a little bit more about mining. Or, and I want to emphasize one blog post here. So it, it's called, we, we, we just, we get asked all the time, like how do I get into Bitcoin mining? From how to start mining, how to work in mining, everything in between. So we wrote one blog post which says who to follow on Twitter, which Telegram groups to join the community, where to buy the ASICs, um, where to learn uh, everything. So if you want to get anything with Bitcoin mining, just read this. It's not the full picture, but it's a good start. Uh, and then the last point that I want to make, so those are the three books that we published. So the first one is really understanding why Bitcoin. So it's a short history of money. So it's like, a, we call it a Bitcoin standard, but shorter and funnier. Uh, I'm not uh, shitting on Bitcoin standard, but I, I, I don't like to read. So I, I prefer this shorter variant. Um, and then we have Bitcoin mining handbook. So all the basics on, on, uh, on mining from what the hell is mining, the DICE analogy up to really com more complex topics like how Stratum V2 can help decentralization. Um, so it's not just just for the noobs. And then the last one that we published just two months ago, it's called Bitcoin Mining Economics. It goes really into nitty gritty of, for example, different energy sources, how it impacts your cash flow, etc. 
etc etc so it's like a it's more dedicated to larger industrial farms um, and like helping them uh, predict the cash flow of the mining operations because mining is not fun I want to emphasize two points here um, they're all for free on our website, so you can download them, brains.com slash books. You just download them for free. Or if you visit us at the Brains booth today, we have around like 200, 300 books. And we, we, we're very cool guys. So you just follow us on Twitter and get a book. So stop by, stop by after, after this. And it's the end of the commercial right now. Um, so you started with learning about Bitcoin. You, you, you say, hey, this, 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 this future internet, uh, funny internet money really makes sense. I'll go in, I'll learn a little bit about mining. I say, okay, I understand it, I want to go in. So now you have to understand why. And it's like, it's the next why. Because the first why is, okay, why Bitcoin? But then you have to understand why would you go into mining? Because the mining is, as I said, very brutal, very vicious industry. So you really have to understand why. Because in a lot of the cases, the case could be, hey, making DCA every month is going to be way better for you. Like going into mining is really, really hard. And there are the, like, as I said, like it's getting super professional. It's not simple business. But it, so to do it right is very, very complicated. But of course, can have a lot of fruits. But it's really understand, important to understand why. So of course, you want to go in to make money. But for example, you, you'll find out, hey, my electricity cost is not that good. Or I don't have fixed contract for more than six months, etc., etc. So you might find out, hey, this is not for me. Or you, or you can go and say, hey, maybe, which is, for example, my case, I'm a small pleb miner. I mine with uh, uh, one S19 in Paraguay and a few Watts miners in Mexico. And for me, I said, hey, okay, I have a really good electricity price, but not that crazy good like the big dogs get uh, in the US. But, um, but for me, getting non-KYC Bitcoin has a premium for me. So I was able to say I'm mining the mine SaaS that I get, get a little bit higher premium. That's how I feel. That's why I think it makes sense. And that's why I'm mining. But you have to really understand why would you go into mining for yourself? Or we have another use cases like heat reuse. There's a always in the mining industry for, for the longest period of time, we were thinking like there's only one output, which is the, the corn, the Bitcoin, like the one output is Bitcoin, but there are two outputs. The second output is heat and this is just starting the industry. You can reuse the heat for the greenhouse. Uh, you can reuse the heat. We saw it in agricultural um, use cases, like uh, when they were making whiskey. In, in one of the moments, you have to heat, uh, you know, the process. And they were using uh, 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 like the mining heat. So that's another. So in that case, maybe you think, okay, my uh, electricity is not that crazy low. I cannot compete with Paraguay. But maybe you can reuse the heat and sell the heat and increase the mining mining profitability. So you really have to understand why you're going into mining. Or you can do it as flex. Uh, that's another like 5% premium that I, I use on my own Bitcoin because I can go to conferences and say I'm a miner. So it's a valid use case how you can increase your profitability. My point is you really have to understand why you're going into mining. Mining is brutal, it's getting more brutal every day, and you have to understand why you want to do it. So let's get a miner. Here is just like a two very important thing and one big disclaimer or like a warning. Please don't don't ever do the cloud mining again. We had it like cloud mining was big, big thing in 2017. Never, please don't don't touch it. You see it on the website cancel it no just no you have to own the physical machines but there are two there are two, still two paths you can buy it and put it in your garage or put it where you know the electricity is so you have physical access to it or you have a partner like i do so there's a large data center sitting in paraguay with a team that is professional and know what they're doing and i buy the machine and i put them in there in their in their data center in their farm or they can help you source it or they can but the important part is know the team like know it like I, i'm only mining there because i know them myself I, I wouldn't just go randomly to a website and say hey this looks nice here's a, a nice looking dude from created by ai who says it's the best mining operation ever no just don't do it ask like the people in mining they are really really friendly sometimes we look like digs on twitter everybody from us uh, from bitcoiners but really helpful so if you ask i don't know go to the like 
f- famous names like the like the mining influencers I, I call them right on, on Twitter and just ask hey do you know anybody and then do your own research like ask few people uh, me- message them set up a conference call with them ideally go them and visit them like to, to check hey this form actually exists um, but uh, but do your own research it's very very important um, so you have to so you make the decision if you're going to um, have the physical miner at, at your home in your hands or you're going to put it somewhere else uh, to a like remote location on the farm where they will take care of it but then we still get like uh, all the question like where but where do i buy it we don't recommend uh, there are c- companies popping up all the time the new ones they die like as i said mining is brutal so it's changing all the time but we Uh, but we on uh, on the blog post that I showed before, like how to get into Bitcoin mining, we just give you. We don't recommend it, but it's like, hey, if you really want to try, like those three, they're lo- really long time in the in the in the space, and and um, and you can start there. Um, so then you join a mining pool. Now whoever follows my steps, it's gonna be few simple steps, and uh, at the end you will be mining, and you can flex, go around the conference, and show that you're mining. So I'm gonna be showing you now how to set up a mining pool, how to connect the miner to the mining pool, and whoever follows me will have the same because I can split the hash rate on my machine of the S19, so I can send 20% to that random guy and 20% to another guy. So if you want to be a miner now. Uh, please follow my steps. So go to brains.com. Is anybody following me or can I go s- faster? Okay, one? Okay, okay, okay. So go to brains.com. Um, it's with double eyes because uh, the brand was created by very two big nerds back in the day, so they were not thinking about marketing. So it's a it's, it's little bit uh, more complicated brand, but it's a brains with double eyes. And then on the top, in the top in the menu click at the brains pool so brains pool we're the oldest running mining pool i think you know us under the brand slash pool we renamed last year because we have a lot of new products uh, so we want to unify everything under brains umbrella now and uh, as i said we are mining from 2010 and we mined over 1.3 million bitcoin so sign up sign up and th- that's the first learning lesson for you it's very easy to join a mining pool To join our mining pool, so please sign up. I already have an account, so I'll skip this. Just sign up. What I, what I want to show you, it's just email. It's just email, username, and password. And that's it. And then you it, you get an email, you uh, you click confirm, and you have an account. It's that simple. So when, whenever you hear, oh, mining is so centralized, we have only 10, 10 mining pools. First of all, bullshit, because from the mathematical perspective, you have to have the pool of certain size in order for the pool to serve the purpose of like uh, decreasing the variance uh, of rewards. So we, so mathematically, we cannot have 50 pools. It's just, it's nonsense. So whoever says we need more mining pools, it's bullshit. It's never gonna happen. You have to have at least two to three percent of the market in order to have the purpose of the mining pool. So it, we'll never see 20 mining pools, right? So that's the first part second part is switching is super simple as i'm showing you creating an account with us it's literally email password and um and a username uh username because you can have more accounts under one email but it, uh, it's not that important so everybody has a setup um are you ready one is saying yes You see how brains pool works magnificently, flawlessly, and quickly. Okay, so let's let's go to the second part. We're gonna log into the. Oh, I'll let you do that. Uh, we're gonna be logging into pool. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll <laughs> In the meantime, I'll tell you a cool story of uh, of this. Which is so this is a fun, cool hardware story. Fix it, please. 
<laughs> so this is a this is this is the first brains hardware ever. So when, whenever I say this is the first hardware, I, I was lying. This was our secret project for a long time. So this is called a brains dongle. It's actually working hardware. So you would have a JTAG pin, pin connectors here, but we remove we remove them because they're quite sharp. So for the purpose of the kitchen, we remove them. And it's a it's a very very cool thing. So it's a do you know jailbreaking on iPhone or like a getting root access? So it's the same thing. So Bitmain, what they do is like they, they log their firmware. They log their firmware, they log their control boards. And we are producing like an aftermarket firmware, so we wanted to install our operating system into their machine. But they are making it very, very difficult. So we found a hack, but it required like a physical, to like a hardware token that you connect to the control board, right? So we made 40,000 of them. They arrived from China, and in two days we find a software workaround so we literally have no use for this and we created keychains out of it <laughs> so so please if you want take and we have more at the brains booth uh yeah it's not unlocking miners now it's unlocking doors now uh, but it's the most <laughs> over engineered keychain on the planet and the most expensive so uh do we know what's happening no can you use another account co když support nejde, použij SXL. Ty znáš, že jsme SXL? No, ale ten co? No, nechceš. I didn't check if we have sk scheduled maintenance, I'm sorry, I, I should have looked. Mm. Je to spolemé. Anyway, so I'll, I'll jump into the miner itself. She'll find out what's going on. And... Uh, so we set up the pool, we can wait with that a little bit, because in the pool, the only thing that you would need is actually looking how you, um, collecting the reward. You don't need it, you just need to create the account. Actually, it shows, you don't have to connect to the pool right now uh, in order to start mining. You just need to create the account, because now we log into the miner, so what do you do? You get the mining machine, and then imagine you plug it in in your room, right? So you plug it in, and you plug in, Power and uh, Ethernet connector. You have to plug it in into the internet. It doesn't have Wi-Fi. And then what you do? Download um, like IP scanner uh, app in your in your computer. It just runs your network and says, "Hey, you have four devices. These are the IP addresses." And you see, okay, this is the mining machine. Then you go into the laptop and up top, right instead of uh, Google.com, you write the IP address of the miner, and this is what you see. Uh, this this UI is our firmware, so our, our custom firmware, uh, because it's better. I'll show you many many reasons and features why it's better than what the Bitman is doing. But it like it looks it looks uh, like the core functionality is the same. So whenever you go to Watts Miner to Bitman, you use our firmware. You all gonna find the same principle. It's very easy. It's like imagine using email uh, from Hotmail or Gmail. In the end of the day, it's email. It's easy to understand. So looking at our firmware, you will you will understand all the firmware. So this is our our firmware, and uh, it, it it it's not a security bug uh, because it's running on your network, and you can change it later. Starts with root, no password. You log in, and I want to say a cool story. This what would happen. Uh, this this machine is already running, and this this would happen also with the machine that you would buy. And a bad story from the past. So so whenever you plug it in, you have to log in immediately and send it to your pool account because it's hashing, but it's hashing to no nowhere. So you're losing money. So right now you would have to go in and put the pool account that you you own to send the hash rate to your pool account. But here is a bad story from the past. So Bitmain, they're still the dominant player. They have like let's say seventy. 70% of the market, like just few few years ago, they were still doing it. I think four years ago, whenever you plugged in the machine, the first, the first when you go to configuration, the first here are the pools. So here are the pool accounts where where you're sending the hash rate, right? So the first the pool URL here, you say, hey, please send it to the server location of Brains Pool. 
So this this is the server location, and the username is the whatever account that you just created. It's as simple as that. But what Bitmain was doing, so when you plug in the the machine, they had uh, their own account there, and then so it it starts mining and it starts mining to their account, and then when you change it, nobody has the data. But imagine like the large operations when you're plugging in, like the miners are sometimes going for like a a long time like idle, and they were mining to their own and they were not talking about it. So I take it as a, hey, they can do whatever they want, free market, but I take it as a very dicky move. And, uh, you know, they could have sent it to OpenSats or, or to Bitcoin core developers. No, they send it to themselves and buy Bitcoin cash with it. So anyway, so this is the, this is the minor... This is the minor UI. V very, very simple. Here you can see the hash rate. So whatever the, 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 the computational output that the machine is created. And on the right, I'll, I'll, I can make it a little bit bigger. I don't know how. So I'll just zoom in. And on the right, you see like a overview of the, the hash rate, efficiency. Here I want to stop for a minute and explain. This is estimated efficiency. Uh, Many, many people take it wrong. You have, in order to be sure, you always measure at the wall. So you just buy the, the, the machine that measures how much real consumption is taking the machine in order to be sure. Because there are some like technical details of like a, or if we can have better machine with better PSU, with, which would have a better firmware, then you could actually go from estimated to real eff uh, efficiency. But Bitmain machines are crap, so it's just, Estimate. So remember, it's estimate and always measure at the wall. So, uh, so the, yeah, th those two things. Then you can see some some status like, uh, hey, is everything working? Are you connected to a pool? Blah blah blah. blah. Uh, fans like uh, there are four fans on intake, on outtake. Uh, how much they are running, and then some other stuff, and then. I'll tell you later about. But here you can see very interesting thing. Uh, what we are doing with our firmware. Um, we're doing something called auto-tuning, uh, which Bitmain and Stock Firmware is not doing, and it was running. So before I came to this workshop, we had to tune the machine for 22 hours in order to, f in order to increase the efficiency what Bitmain is not doing. But I'll get to that later if we have time. How much time do we have, and is pool working? Okay, we have time. Okay. Did anybody log in? You have a question. Node, yes. without node, yes. So miners are not nodes. The mining pool is a node. So I, so when you say yes, miners are interacting with nodes also because they're nodes. It's true, but for on the pool level. So when the pools were created, we abstracted away the node business from the miner itself. So you're just running the machine. You're sending me as the pool operator the hash rate, and I'm managing all the work with the node. Yeah. So, and that's why, by the way, you're giving me the fee, pool fee because I, I take care of that business, so I make your life way easier. So that's why you pay me, sort of, yeah. What is the pool fee? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, so the question was, what is the pool fee? So, it, so we're the first pool ever to, and first to introduce the fees. So we made the fees actually in the back of the days. Um, it's a funny story, I'll tell you later. So we started with 2%. And then when the Chinese started to enter the market, they were just going <laughs> lower than that. So we're, we're around 2%, but to be honest, it's very, very, hey, it, it's, it's business. The larger you are, the, the better deal you're getting. 2% of, yes, yes. So, so imagine, so we mine a Bitcoin block, which is 6.25 plus the fees, and then we take 2% and then the rest we divide among all our miners. But uh, what's up? Um, another big miner entered the game. Um, so so yes, so officially it's around two percent. But really think it, it's not a secret. It's just the bigger you are, the better deal you're you're getting. It's it's very simple. It's nothing secretive. It's true. It all it's B two B business. But one more point. The the pool the pooled ga uh, the pooled game is really it's a, r a race to zero. So we're already so my we're already getting there. So the thing about pools not like a, the core business, but the core pool of your users, and then you have to have other services where you make money. That's why we went into the game of creating the firmware, 
because we have like a pool of users on our pool and then we need something extra where we can make money. So really, I think in the not long future, like with the next halving, not this one which is coming in May, but the next one, I think pools will be zero or m maybe even at a at loss and you will be have to making money somewhere else. It's true. Uh, by the way, that, that's why I started to laugh because you know how got, pool fees got created? Okay, so story time. So... So Marek, he created the first pool, right? He created our pool and, and it was for free. And then community on Bitcoin forum, they were like, hey, dude, but this means like, if it's for free, you're gonna centralize. Like all, like why would anybody go mine on their, on their own? They will all join you and there's a centralization for us. And it was like, no, 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 dudes, I was just playing, tinkering around. I was just trying this software. I didn't mean to centralize. I'll put a fee there. And he was like, hmm, what fee do I put? And then I, I just think it was like a random before night. He's like, hey, let's do 2%. And then a few years later, he was like, why did I start so low? Because from 2%, it's really difficult to go much down. So it's just a funny story. It was very, very random pick of 2%. Um, yeah, so that, that's part of the history. So the pool is running. So you log into the, the pool account. Everybody logged in. Everybody logged in, perfect. And now you would go to where you find the... So now you have to do one, one single thing. You have to find where to mine. So, but th this is... So this is only the pool dashboard, but no, 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 on the pool. So now you have to find out the location of the mining server where you're going to point your hash rate. So you would go into Ac Academy, like the help center. Oh, there. Oh, sorry. And you will you'll find... You don't have to do this now. I'll do it for you. But you will. You guys will be giving me your usernames. So you will. Co you will copy. Please, please do it. Help me. Thank you. So you will copy the mining URL. This is basically. It's just the internet location of the server. So it says uh, to the machine, and then you go to configuration, and there you said exactly the first. The first row is just the physical location of the server where you're sending the hash rate. So you will put the. It has a weird, um, like a stratum plus TCPs. It's the it's the mining protocol standard. And then you'll put a username. So we're gonna put the. And then whoever created account, it would be good if you can come here and write your account. That would be the easiest. Or you can sh because it, if it's easy, then shout it at me. But um, so what we're doing now, you can you can do very very cool. F the core functionality of the firmware is very simple. It starts mining and you just say, tell it where to send the hash rate. But there are some cool features, others that you can use. I'll show you some of the later, but one of the features that we're right now using is splitting the hash rate. So for example, what you can do, hey, the, the mining machines are very expensive. So even for one machine, you can split it with your friend. You buy it with your friend or with four friends and you Right in the firmware, you can split it and you can be sending to different pools, different geolocations, different accounts, and you can just split the hash rate. Um, so on the first row, we have... No, to is the default pool group, no? So who's mining? Okay, you too? Will you shout the username at me? <laughs> shout the username or come here and write the username. That's gonna be the easiest. Uh, until we do it, I will tell you some other story time. What, what, what was it okay. Or anybody has any questions? So let me, let me just set up three new. Yeah. Okay. Um, tell me your name, like username. Oh, okay. um, F R I. Where's the? Right the. Okay. okay there's the law. Oh, it's out of. That's a lot of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Question. Why did you say that it doesn't make sense to have a mining pool with less than two percent or three percent of the global? So don't quote me exactly on the number. Maybe it's two point eight, two point seven. I don't know. I'm a marketing guy, but I remember it's around two or three percent. So what 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 is mining pool doing? So mining pool is. You're mining with the hash rate that people are sending you. You're finding the blocks and you're distributing the rewards. But there are reward payout systems. So m the standard currently is called PPS. So how to explain it? Um, 
Finding a Bitcoin block is very random. Sometimes it can happen, so on average it's 10 minutes, but sometimes it can happen sooner, sometimes it can happen faster, and sometimes it doesn't happen to you. So sometimes you find less blocks as a pool, sometimes more. So the current standard is the pool will cover cover the when it's um, when it's mining less blocks it will cover it from its own pocket from its own reserves and it will pay the miners and when it's mining more blocks then it will t uh, it will keep the upside and put it into the reserves so then it really becomes the game of like a, um, the probability etc etc if you're getting very very tiny you can have a very very long periods of where you're paying from your own pocket and it will destroy you. You literally, so just just so you understand, uh, pool of our size, so we're like a, we're very small, we're seven exahash out of the 450. And just on our size, we need hundreds of BTCs in, in the reserves to cover for the like bad luck period. So imagine now, so theoretically you could do it, but you would be, Absolutely insane. Imagine you have 0 0.5 uh, global hash rate in your pool, and you in that moment you can really hit like a bad luck streak when you're not mining blocks for several weeks, but you have to pay the miners uh, what they deserve for their hash rate. It will absolutely destroy you. You would be thousands of BTCs and miners. And like if you're that crazy, go for it. But it doesn't make sense. Like rational thinking says you need two, three percent when it actually like the risk reward ratio makes sense. Or you have to be, I see a marathon uh, head, so I, I think uh, maybe he's from marathon. Or you have to be marathon who's mining for themselves. So like uh, they they don't have to pay anybody else. They can argue themselves. Hey, this keeping it in house mining for ourselves makes sense. Yeah. So why does the why does the pool have an obligation to pay the miners if they're not you know being randomly distributed the chance to mine? Why is that? So why why why? So it's when called a uh, pool re um, yeah, yeah. pool reward systems. So there are several. So the, but in general, there are two. There are PPS and score system. So Brains Pool is currently a score system. So just to explain to you, we really distribute when we find a block. So we, we mine, 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 you don't get any sats. Then we find a block and we distribute. If we find more, then we distribute more. If we find less, you're going to see less. But it has a very down, like the, the bad downside is we really hit, like it's just probabilistic. So really, sometimes happened that for one day, two days, we don't find a block, and really the miners hate it because like you want, you want the sats the, 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 all the time. So we're the last one or last two pulling also has the score system with this payout scheme. Everybody else, so that's when the when the Chinese pools entered the game in 2013, and they introduced the PPS where they pay like you would be finding the blocks with 100% probability. So they introduced it, and of course, hey, very naturally, as a miner, as a user, you like it better, you prefer it. So the market all followed to that reward system, and it's a standard now. But it's, it's, it's very simple, like me as a miner, I, I, I want that service. It's, it's just easier, it's better, yeah. So, but of course, like, yes. Another question? No? You said that, uh, mining in the cloud, but the cloud mining. It, it's, uh, it's all scam. It's all scam. It's not good. Like, there are so, so bad stories. And even from, like, reputable companies, I don't want to name them, but uh, even, like, big reputable companies with large mining operations that are in the game since, I don't know, 2014, and they were rack pulling. The, like, I not. 6,000 last yeah, year. Yeah. With dead bullshit, yes. Yeah. So then I start to learn Bitcoin. So nice, it like, bravo. It was an investment, not a loss. We call, we call it educational budget. Absolutely. Yes, yes. It's, it's true. It sucks, but it's true. Uh, so we're setting up the last, uh, the last miner. PPS is decentralizing your force, right? Of course. Have, it, because you, especially as hash rate increases and block rewards decrease, you have to have more than 3%. That ratio you gave is going to be 5 and 10% at some point, right? For the business model to work. If you have to pay, because that bad luck period is getting longer. Yes. Yes, but... Um, 
centralization it's not binary so it's not like a switch it's not saying sure. oh so it's like a, it's it's scale of course yes in that regard it is a little bit more centralizing like uh, and killing the smaller players but we're gonna see as i said like the 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 mining is becoming so big and professional we're gonna see like a less entities of more with higher pro, pro, pro like mm, professionalization but it's not bad like i don't see it as a issue where i see issues for example is the mining hardware centralization because really like imagine even if imagine something go crazy like foundry goes nuts and they like i don't know starts i don't know uh, double spending whatever right like they, they would do some some attack it's 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 matter of minutes when we find out when we like split and w when we go away from them um it's really like you can spin up a pool on Amazon cloud services in like 30 minutes and somebody from the community would do it and they would spin up their own pool and start running and fuck you foundry. It's really simple. But with ha hash uh, hardware, it's really tough. Like we have a Bitmain dominant player for, I don't know, eight years who has 70, 80% of the market who, and they are doing, uh, they have history of really malicious attacks from mining to on their own from mining bitcoin cash in secretive to having a backdoor to close your miners so they have a proven history of fuck ups and really bad like a reputation and like attack vectors that they used and uh and they're still dominant player. That's that's a real problem. We need a lot of hardware manufacturing, a lot of non-Chinese players where we can then really like the software. Software is sort of easy. Like hardware is really hard. Like really, if if Foundry does anything wrong, f three of those guys sitting here will create their own pool and it will be running. So I'm I'm really not scared about that. Um, I know again and again. Bitcoin works because everybody is a dick and we're like uh, holding each other like guns against each other so found all those players they're incentivized to w work under the rule really I'm emphasizing all the time like Foundry will, will get very very rich if they play according to the rules everybody wants to get rich so like that's why Bitcoin works so yes there are the, some of the problems but by the way there are also Stratum V2 is coming in that's gonna be it's not a silver bullet to solve it, but it's helping. Uh, I'll have a talk tomorrow on the second stage about Stratum V2. There are big things happening in Stratum V2. So come uh, hear it tomorrow. There are alternative pools, the centralized pools, CK pool, um, there was one more. Solo mining is becoming large. Of course, it will never be like more than 5% of the hash rate, but really imagine like when, when we have home heaters, there will be solo mining, etc. That's gonna be a thing. And I, I really think it's gonna be single digit of the global hash rate, and that can be a very small plot pool with a uh, voting right. So, so uh, anyway, so what's happening? So we set up a we set up a miner, and then we split the hash rate among all those uh, that came here. So if you now go into the pool app, you should see a hash rate. No. Sorry. Sorry. In your example, uh, you um, the people who is registered. Now, yeah. Uh, they receive some um, some fee from uh, your uh, mining pool or how it is works your example i don't have understand correctly so you set up a, so you set up a pool yeah. then you connect your mining machine to but the pool but we don't have any mining machine I'm uh, you, you, uh, i will send you oh, okay. Like, right. okay. just just for example i will not, not keep, yeah, keep sending okay. you just understand <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. and then, and, then, uh, and then we th then we take 2% out of that Okay. I saw a hand in the back, yeah? So, one question. Sorry, they, they want you to use the mic. Yeah, for sure, no problem. Hey, um, I see that Antmine and Foundry together have more than 51% yes. of the hash rate together. Yes. Uh, I would love to understand the risks uh, involving this. Uh, if, like, they collude or whatever. Yeah. A lot of it goes back to what I was saying two minutes ago. <laughs> um, it is the case. It is the case, and they can attack Bitcoin currently. But why would they? Really, the cost of go to our website, and there is a cost to 51% attack Bitcoin. It's such an insane amount of money that you... Uh, 
keep attacking Bitcoin for like what? For like 30 minutes, one hour? It doesn't need to do anything. Your business goes from, there are multi-million dollar companies. In a minute, you go to zero, you burn all your Bitcoin reserves, you're nobody, they're going to jail you also. So like there is literally, it's like you would have to be insane, dying in like 30 minutes and just be like, Fuck it. Like let let let's just do it so they will remember me. And then in, in and then in 30 minutes you die and then in one hour the, the whole network is back in the same game and they're like, hey you remember the crazy guy in 2023 when he attacked Bitcoin for like 10 minutes? And that, that that's pretty much it though. So I, I I doubt there is a person that that will see it this way, really. And really changing a pool is a matter of five seconds. Uh, well, and then uh, how does this attack would look like? Is like double spending? Is uh, what is the worst that can happen if this happen? I would, yes. Everybody c c claims, by the way, the double spend. I would actually claim the block withholding is kind of more fun. So that's what I would do. It's just more fun. To, no, no blocks, and Wh then I would one? double spend. So no I, I, I would be keeping the blocks. There are no blocks. There are no blocks, and then I would double spend. So, but it's just it's 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 all irrelevant. It's like you would be attacking literally for a few minutes, costing you millions and millions and millions, like tens of millions. Like literally, go to the website. It's very short, and always I. So our technical writer was writing. I was like, hey, write because I have exactly the same question, right? I'm like, write this, but write it like I'm a Labrador, like I'm a marketing monkey. So you have to dump it down, so really everybody understands. So really, go read that one. Uh, I read it, and I was I was happy that it will never happen. Ooh, interesting one. I would highly recommend. So there is a John Car uh, what, how do you spell? Carvalho. Uh, I don't know now. I never know how Carvalho. I, I call him. He's somewhere around here, and he has a, a booth at the. Um, he actually because I'm thinking about that all the time, right? Um, I really like it. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it's 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 really it, it's the debate for me, and. It, Yes, yes. So, uh, if Bitcoin can have a security budget problem in the in the future, so the the the, the premise is uh, will the Bitcoin reward uh, goes down, so the miners are not mining the new newly mined Bitcoins, then they have no incentives to run and secure the network. So we will not have enough income of the Bitcoin in order to secure the Bitcoin network. It really is built on the premise also. There are two, two, two things. The price would have to go a lot up, like, I mean, a lot, so that in the future it pays the security budget, or, and uh, the fees, so the network would have to be used, the fees would have to be paid, so we would be living from, from fees. So that, that's the, nobody will tell you when and how it will be solved, um, but it really boils down to if Bitcoin makes sense and is the future, then it will not be a problem. But I mentioned John because he he actually had a really different take. I read it in some of the Telegram groups a few days ago, and he was he was actually claiming that it was never the miners, but really the nodes and the merchants uh, who then set how many blocks is it the um, like secure not. So he had a very different take on it. I was like, this is very interesting. So, I, but th I didn't finish reading it, and I want to create some blog posts about it. Uh, but if I highly recommend go talk to him, mention the security budget and he will. So do you see hash rate, guys? Why? Well, it's the licensing server. Yeah, uh, licensing. <laughs> anyway, so I'm probably uh, I'm sorry. So the the the, the thing is that the uh, yeah yeah yeah. So. Keep keep it connected. Keep checking your pool. You'll see it in the next few hours. The the, the hash rate will go up in your account. Anyway, so that was the. Do we have any more questions? Yes. Yeah, shoot. Let's go. That's why I'm here. I'll. Where, where are you? And then I wanted to say what's next. Yeah. So yeah. Shoot. Uh, yeah. Any hardware uh, manufacturer working on a. Uh, like a new uh, technology to mine more efficient and stuff and, and uh, decentralization forces on the hardware side. What you were, that's to follow up on what you were saying. Contenders to Bitmain coming. So who's coming? Yeah, who's okay, coming okay, okay. if anyone's so, coming? So 
So Bitmain is number one. Then the second one. Uh, so let's say Bitmain has 60% of the market, 70. Uh, the second one is what's minor. They would have like, let's say 20, 30%. And then like super tiny, like Kanan and others. Uh, they're all Chinese manufacturers, uh, but they're getting better. Uh, just to give you some example, what's minor is really really working a lot on the reliability of the mining machines and it shows in the market. Like the big players are more and more going to what's minor, which, which I'm saying it's competition, so it's pushing everybody to innovate and to do better. So it's really good. Canon, for example, uh, they are working on things that I'll, that I'll be announcing tomorrow about Stratum V2. So already I see, I think the biggest, the, one of the best things for Bitcoin was the China ban. Because the Ch before the Chinese hardware manufacturers were mining and had the clans in China, and it was like a small closed universe. Now, when the hash rate move, they really have to talk to the like the Western customer, and it's a completely new world. And it's creating even in that small market of free players, it's creating like the competition tension. So already in this small, tiny, bad market, just by this move outside of China, we're see seeing like a hey, they're starting to work. It's like at last, what did you do the last ten years? So that's good. But there are new players, so Blockstream is publicly working on a miner. Uh, Block from Jake Dorsey is working on a miner. And uh, we never said we were working on a mi miner, but we're making a hard Bitcoin mining component. So <laughs> what else are we building? I mean, it will, if it walks like a duck, squeaks like a duck, it's not going to be a giraffe, right? <laughs> so it's like... A <laughs> Um, so you see that from a chip perspective. Also, wait. Also, uh, on mining disrupt, we saw uh, Desive Miner. Uh, we saw uh, so already a new company, uh, non non Chinese. Of course, they're manufacturing in China, but non Chinese, non Chinese uh, investment, non Chinese team. Uh, then we saw Auradine. I think uh, Israeli, uh, very good. Uh, so we like all of a sudden we're we're always wishing for new hardware competition like bam this year like six new companies i'm like what the hell like um so that that's really good and i wanted to say one more thing but i've completely forgot um what i want to show no we have last five minutes uh before or yeah before be just uh, just uh, a, shoot, a quick shoot. one here shoot. um small setup profitability i think you started talking about it uh, earlier yeah. in the presentation um, is it possible to break a profit uh, at all? Yeah. And um, perhaps you can give us a couple of setup yeah. examples and, and a bit of story time on that. Uh, that's why I, I go back to saying you have to understand why mining. Because, for example, for me, like really the, the why really matters. Because for me, uh, I, I calculated, okay, Oh, by the way, always buy hardware in bear markets. Always, never, never, please go away from this workshop, never buying in bull market. Don't be the marathons. Uh, be smart. Um, really buy the mining hardware in bear market. So I did it. I bought in bear market. And, and, my, and my idea was, okay, I want to mine. I want to have operational profit. I will not think about the capex. I will not think about the initial investment I made. In, I just want to operate in profit. So I want to mine more sets than I paid for the electricity that month because I'm playing the flip the ASIC game in the bull market. So with that, with so I'm all, so you can very, at the current... Asic, for, yeah. So in the bull, bull markets, everybody gets crazy, so you and they, sell it. yes. And, what do you think about and then again, wait for the bear market and buy buy the machines. So, the, okay, so but so that's you have to understand why. So yeah. it's kind of speculating on the Asics, right? And uh, what do you think about like uh, last week in Amsterdam? There was one guy, you know, he sells. Uh, I forgot the name of the company. Uh, uh, refurbished S nines to yeah. wa like to heat your place. I what love do you it. think about that? It's well, good. You think Asig, it's worse? Uh, Asig Hydrius is w is gonna be the one of the biggest topics for the next ten years. There are. I will highly re recommend 21 Energy. It's a German company that we work with that are creating. Ho retail home miners uh, that that heat and, and mine and also heat bit. Very cool project as well, and they're they're just starting. Also on our website or in this book, that stop by at our booth, we have a we have a whole chapter on reusing ASIC heat, where we say all the different use cases that are already existing, but it's super early. So like, it could be relevant to have an old retrofit. It's extremely retribution relevant. Nine, yeah? the heat. 
Have you heard of a, there's a French company, forgot the name, that uh, just raised money to, and it's, it doesn't seem to be regular ASICs, like, it's like heaters uh, that mine yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah, 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 but I thought it, they were mining it, it's shitcoins. ASIC inside, yeah, but it's okay. just made for home use, like underclocked, so you don't hear the noise much, etc., etc. Yeah. Cool, okay. Anyway, so we will have to go for the next, but really stop by our booth. I have books for you and we can talk mining all today, tomorrow. That's why I'm here. Let's talk mining. Cheers and thank you.